Hey guys, welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How close are we getting to the Antichrist coming on the scene and forcing the world to worship him and take his mark? The Antichrist will control three aspects of people's lives. The first aspect is a one world monetary system, known as the Mark of the Beast, as we read in Revelation 13, 16 through 18. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on the right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for this number of a man, his number is 666. In order for the Antichrist to control buying, selling, and trading, there must be a cashless society. Europe's central bank will stop printing the 500 euro note in 2018. Canada and Singapore have phased out their large denomination bills. The Philippines, Denmark and others are tweaking regulations to nudge citizens to switch to electronic payments. It's all part of a global trend against paper money. But India's move has been the most radical of all. There, the Prime Minister banned the country's largest banknote and one of its most commonly used ones overnight. We have decided that the 500 rupee and 1,000 rupee currency notes presently in use will no longer be legal tender from midnight to night. What could be better than self-checkout lines at the supermarket? No checkout lines. Amazon's new brick and mortar store is making that a reality. It's testing a new smart grocery store in Seattle called Amazon Go. It allows shoppers to literally walk in, grab food off the shelves, and walk out without standing in a cash register line. Customers tap their smartphones as they walk into the store, which then connects them to their Amazon Prime accounts. By using machine learning, sensors, and artificial intelligence, the company says it can track the items customers pick up. Amazon's calling it Just Walk Out Technology and is set to open to the public in early 2017. Identification in a digital world is crucial, from voting to healthcare to online biometrics ensure the security of those transactions, and ensure a fast, frictionless customer experience as well. How did biometrics come about? It really wasn't called biometrics. It was called fingerprinting, understanding that your fingerprints were a unique identifier to ensure that you were you. There's iris image, face, voice. Some people are working on gait biometrics in terms of how you walk. Innovations about bringing people what they didn't know they want. Aviation and travel where there's all these bottlenecks and lines. Sports stadiums where you're seeing the same thing. Healthcare where somebody wants to know that you are you and all the things associated with your healthcare. When you're taking out a credit card and payment. Longer term, voting. It's all places where somebody wants to ensure your identity in the next five to ten years. We will look back on pictures of all of us carrying around driver's license and credit cards and keys and question why we did that sort of like my kids now question the rotary phone. We make a fist to squeeze the tag to the top of my skin. And when I approach the device, it opens the Facebook page I set it to. Colin Cravino has a microchip implanted in both of his hands. Some people just look really grossed out. I put my hand up and I let them poke at it and they freak out. Developed in the 1950s and 60s, RFID chips, short for radio frequency identification, have been used by retailers to track packages and prevent theft. Farmers use the chips to keep tabs on their livestock. Pet owners use them to identify their cats and dogs. And lately, members of the so-called body hacker movement have been implanting RFID chips under their skin, programming them to perform various tasks. Colin Corvino, a smartphone repairman in Brooklyn, New York, uses his chips to open his front door. He found them on a website called Dangerous Things that sells implant kits and offers user tips. I came across it when I was doing research on the Samsung deadbolt that I bought. And then the first thing that I noticed was that I could get an RFID tag that would work with a deadbolt. Corvino plans to modify one of his motorcycles next. And I haven't decided on where I want to put the authenticator, the antenna, thinking probably down by the seat somewhere because this comes off. So I would just tap my hand on it. Then the light would come on as if I put the key in. 
and then I would just hit the ignition and start the vehicle. RFID retailers estimate that between 30 and 50,000 people worldwide have chip implants in their bodies. German tech consultant Andreas Schostrom used his chip as a boarding pass on a recent flight from Stockholm to Paris and to get into an airport VIP lounge. Skeptics say the implants raise privacy issues and worry that strangers could tap into the information on a chip without the owner's knowledge. Others say potential uses for the technology, such as keeping track of a patient with dementia, could pose ethical concerns. But Cravino and others see a future where technology and the human form will merge. I think when it becomes more prevalent and there's a lot more things and options that you can do with this, that people will, you know, opt in for that kind of augmented human sort of attitude. That's why I have an Android device and not an iPhone, is because I want to be able to customize everything I have, so why should I not be able to customize myself? In order for the Antichrist to control the people, there must be a biometric database with a surveillance system. If you own one of those uh, store shopping reward cards, you know it's no coincidence when store offers show up later for products you recently purchased. Well, some say corporations know more about each of us than the government ever will. And when it comes to new technologies like biometrics, one expert says that uh, technology is advancing faster than our ability to contain it. Here's CTV's Kevin Green. Would you swallow this pill so you didn't have to remember another password or wear an electronic tattoo identifying you to get better deals? It's not sci-fi. These are real, and it's just the beginning of a tech revolution. All kinds of things that we don't even think about, where we shop in the store, what things we pick up, are starting to be recorded and analyzed. Tom Keenan of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute says biometric ID is advancing faster than our ability to contain it, and he calls it creepy. There's no way society can keep ahead of this. We've seen retinal scans in airports. Now even some U.S. schools use them to speed up cafeteria lines. Cars use them instead of keys. Banks are lining up to implement the technology at ATMs. It makes it easier for us, but also easier for the people who watch us. So somebody with enough data processing power, which is dirt cheap now, can go out there and follow everything that you do. Police use facial recognition software to scan huge banks of images, and they're testing ways to identify us just by the way we walk. Keenan says that technology will come to the store down the street. So next time you go into the Walmart, maybe it knows as you walk in there who you are, that you're pre-diabetic, et cetera, et cetera, and suddenly you start being manipulated. The company Nimi's wristbands use our heartbeat to identify us for finances, for passwords, for booking travel. Keenan worries will simply accept new technologies because it's easy without thinking hard about how others might use it. Even if they get that data, what are they going to do with it? Will they use it against you? Will they sell it to your insurance company? Big worries about people not being insurable because of information that was taken from them in the context of biometrics. Keenan fears without laws to govern biometrics governments and eventually companies will end up knowing more about you than you know about yourself. We were surprised to learn that nearly half of American adults are in facial recognition databases. What is law enforcement doing with your mug? Jeff Pegues takes a look. The facial recognition technology locks on once you're in range. It's putting the green box around us and then displaying our names. Benji Hutchinson works for NEC, a company that sells the software. So there are cameras like this on the streets. There are. Cameras equipped with the software can match a person's face to others in a database. It could have helped after the Boston Marathon bombing. Investigators there had to sift through 120,000 photos and nearly 13,000 videos before identifying Jokar Sarnayev. It would have led to the suspect sooner? Absolutely, it would have dramatically decreased the lead time. We could have gotten this, the match in seconds. In Baltimore, the police department used facial recognition during the 2015 riots to identify looting suspects, but it has raised privacy concerns. Alvaro Bedoya is an author of a Georgetown Law School study on facial recognition. It found 26 police departments use the technology and 16 states allow the FBI to tap into their systems. Photos are culled from social media images, driver's licenses, and government IDs. The report argues the biometric network 
primarily includes law-abiding Americans. Maryland enrolled four million drivers in its system and ask a Marylander, do they know they're in a lineup that's scanned thousands of times a year without warrants? And I'm pretty sure they'll be surprised about that. God gives us the most dire warning about what will happen to those who take the mark of the beast. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out the bowls of the wrath of God on the earth. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. The second aspect, a one world religion as we read in Revelation 17, 1 through 5 and verse 15. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, who is the false one world religion, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, which is the one world false religion, and of the abominations of the earth. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, which is the people of the world. The great harlot of Babylon will have great worldwide influence over people and nations. Do we see any evidence of a one world religion forming? La mayor parte de los habitantes del planeta se declaran creyentes. Esto debería provocar un diálogo entre las religiones. No debemos dejar de orar por él y colaborar con quienes piensan distinto. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Alá. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, Hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Confío en vos para difundir mi petición de este mes. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. Confío en tu oración. Eventually, the harlot, who is the one world false religion, will lose favor with the Antichrist, who will want to receive the world's worship for himself, as we read in Revelation 17, 16 and 17. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire, for God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. The Antichrist will not share the adoration of the world with the prophets and priests of the false religion, no matter how obsequious or fawning they may be. Once the Antichrist gains the world's amazed attention by his miraculous return from the dead, he will turn on the false religious system and destroy it, establishing himself as God, as we read in Revelation 13, 11 through 12. Then I saw another beast, who is the false prophet, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spoke like a dragon. And he, the false prophet, exercises all the authority of the first beast, who is the Antichrist, in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. The third aspect is a one world government, as we read in Revelation 13, 7. It was granted to him, the Antichrist, to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation, which is the people of the world. 
We can plainly see the stage setting taking place for the Antichrist to take his place on the world stage. What will be the trigger that enables the Antichrist to become the leader of the one world government, forcing all people to take his mark and to be worshipped as God? Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.